Okay, we're talking still about factoring trinomials where the a is not 1. And then now we're going to talk about what do we do if a and c are not prime. Um, and so if you're starting to do the trial and error process and you're getting lots of, lots of combinations you have to try, um, maybe consider these other options and techniques that I'm going to show you. All right, again, trial and error, you can always do. It just might take a while. But um, here, this is, uh, this is an option. So let's say we we're trying to do this by trial and error. And we were saying, OK, I know that 2 is prime. So I know that has to be 2x and x. All right, however, 12. 12 could be 1 and 12. It could be... 12 and 1. It could be, it could be, what's another one? 2 and 6. I'm just going to use blue. All right, which means that I could also have 6 and 2. All right, I could also have. Three and four, which means I could have a four and three. All right, so we have a lot of options to to try, and that's that. And two is prime. <laughs> Imagine if this two were, I don't know, let's say that was fifteen. All right, then you have even more choices because then you've got to not only uh, check all of these. But then you've got to check um, another set where the first ones are switched. So it's a lot of work. So the next technique that I'm going to show you is called factor by grouping. Okay, and I just want to remind you, this slide is just a reminder. We've done this several times. When we FOIL out, right, those two uh, numbers in the middle get combined, and that's how we get our middle term. Okay. So that's what we're going to focus on and factor by grouping. Okay, so when I say factor, have you tried factor by grouping? This is the method that I'm talking about. All right, so factor by grouping says what we're going to do is we're going to multiply. Instead of treating um, the A term and the C term separately, what we're going to do is we're going to multiply. So I'm multiplying this times that. So 2 times 12 is 24. Okay, now I'm going to treat this kind of like um, like the uh, first, the basic easy ones where a was equal to 1. And I'm going to say, what are my what are my factors of 24? I've got 1 times 24, 2 times 12, 3 times 8, 4 times 6, and then those are all my factors. And now I'm going to look at my middle term and say which one of those add up to be 11x. So that would be this one right here. Now here's the difference. I'm not going to go in and say, oh, it's x plus 3x plus 8, because obviously that wouldn't make sense. However, what I'm going to do is I'm going to split this. This just helps me know how to split this middle term. So basically what I'm doing is using that process to help me figure out what this looked like before I combined like terms. So it's another, it's another way of look, thinking about it. So we're kind of taking that distributive property, uh, distributive uh, process backwards step by step. So I went from here to here. So this is what this problem looked like before these terms got combined. If I were to combine 3x, 8x, that would give me 11x, right? Okay. So again, repeat a reminder of how we got to here. I'm multiplying the a times the c to get my 24. That's how I got that. And then I used the factors of 24 to get my 3x and my 8x. So now what we're going to do is we're going to group. This is why this is called grouping, because we're, we're going to split this problem up into two different groups. I'm splitting this up into this group and this group. And the reason I'm doing that is I'm going to do my greatest common factor. Remember the, from that intro video? So when I'm doing my greatest common factor, 
I'm going to say, okay, what's in this first group, what can I factor out? What's in common? Well, I can only divide both of these by x. They don't have a coefficient in common. So x comes in front, and then I'm left with 2x plus 3. And then I'm going to do the same thing in the second group. What can I divide these by? And again, I want my highest, greatest common factor. So that looks like 4 would be my highest. And there's no x in common. Do you see that? So there's no x. So I'm going to have a positive plus 4 in the front. And then um, and when I divide, I'm going to get 2x plus 3. Now at this point, you should have this parenthesis in common. Do you see that? Those two parentheses, what's in your parentheses, should match. If they don't, then something, something in the previous steps has gone wrong or this is not factorable, okay? So those are your two options. Either you're doing something wrong or this problem can't even be done by factoring, okay? So if you've got the matching though, then you can proceed and I want you to think of it this way. I have two groups still. I have this group and this group, okay? They're really like terms, all right? So I have this thing added to this thing. And so now I'm going to do the greatest common factor again. And here it's kind of crazy, but what I'm dividing by in each term is this common parenthesis. What do they have in common? Well, they have the parenthesis in common. So that's what I'm dividing out, okay? So it's like I'm, I'm canceling that out here, and I'm canceling that out here. So again, what do we do when we're doing our greatest common factor? Whatever we're dividing by, we put in front. The 2x plus 3 is what we were dividing by in each term. And then <clears throat> that goes in front of the parentheses. And what do we have left? Well, when these divide out, my first term, the only thing that's left is that x. And then over here in this second part, the only thing that was left here after those divide out was the 4, the positive 4. OK, so this is how we factor this using factor by grouping. Okay, now we could have gone back and done the trial and error. Some people like this way, some people don't. This, um, this requires a little less um, thinking. It's more of a step one, you do this. Step two, you do this. The only thing that's kind of trial and error is this part right here when you have to find your factors of 24. Okay, so some people like it, some people don't, but let's practice this. Just to, Sometimes it takes practicing it to, to know whether you do like it or not. So let's do it this way. All right, so here's one where this is a good example of when you maybe don't want to do this because if I'm going to multiply A times C, that's going to be a huge number. In fact, I'm going to go get my calculator. <laughs> so when I do my A times C, that gives me 450. Holy moly. All right, so... Again, I'm going to do it this way. You can see it. But I probably, if I was doing this on my own, I would, I would actually do trial and error on this one, even though there's going to be lots of options, because finding all the factors of 450 is going to be a process as well. So I would have 1 times 450, 2 times 225, And again, you don't have to list all of these because obviously if I want these to add to be 45, remember this is positive, this is a positive 450, so these would have to be both positive and both negative. So I don't have to really do these small ones. It's just if you get stuck, okay, all I'm doing is, okay, I'm doing 450 divided by 4. That doesn't work. 450 divided by 5, that's 90. So I'm getting a little bit closer. So I'm just going through and listing them using my calculator. So still not, still not going to get me 45. So I've tried 7. I tried 8. I know 9 will work. Getting closer, we know 10 will work. And Beth, you probably could see that 10 and 45 would be a very easy factors to get. So you might just want to start your list here and then go on from there, right? So, 
And once you get past your, your ones that you can do mentally, you might want a calculator so that you don't miss any. Because sometimes we're like, oh, I don't, I don't think, you know, this one will go into it. And it ends up going into it. So look at this one. When I got to 15, 15 and 30, if I add 15 and 30, that's going to give me 45. So here's my combination. So not terrible, but I did have to break out my calculator, to be quite honest. And since uh, 45 is negative, I want both of these to be negative, right? So I want this to be negative 15x and negative 30x, and I have plus 25. Okay, so the whole purpose of doing that, like I said, this is probably the hardest part, is getting those uh, combinations. So now we're just doing uh, GCF factoring. I'm doing this group, and I'm doing this group. All right. Tip here. Anytime you have a negative, make sure you factor out a negative. All right, we'll get there. So in this group, my greatest common factor between 18 and 15 looks like 3. So I'm dividing each of these by 3 and, a, and an x. So 3x. So I'm going to put 3x in front. That's going to leave me with 6x minus 5. Over here, so even though this doesn't have a negative, like this one's negative, this one's positive, my tip to you is factor out the negative. Okay? And I'll show you why in a minute. So 30 and 25, that's looking like it's going to be negative 5. Notice they do not have an x in common, so it's just going to be a negative 5. So I'm going to have negative 5, and then that's going to leave me with 6x minus 5. So here's why I wanted to do the negative. Do you see how my parentheses match? If I had not done the negative 5, this would have been a negative 6x and a positive 5, and then my parentheses wouldn't match. So I just suggest you always do a negative. That'll help get your parentheses matching. All right, so since my parentheses match, I'm dividing out that common parentheses. All right, so since I'm dividing out that common parentheses, that goes in front of my parentheses. When that cancels there, I'm left with 3x. When that cancels there, I'm left with a negative 5. So that would be my answer to factoring that. Alrighty, so last, so here's a, a summary of, of how we do factor by grouping. If you want to pause the video, if you want that just for your notes, that might be good. Um, pause it if you need to, if you want to. If not, um, I'm going to go on to the next one, and you're going to try one on your own. All right, so here you go. Try this one on your own. Okay, so you should have gotten this, and I have boxed it here. So 4x minus 3 and 2x plus 5. And again, the order doesn't matter. I will say, though, if you were going through this, hopefully, you eventually, over here in green, I just have my mental math of what I did. But as soon as you get to 6 and 20 and you see that that works for 14, I would stop. I wouldn't just list all the factors of 120 just for the heck of it. All right, so um, what you might have done, though, is you might have flip-flop these. So you might have put the 20x first and then the negative 6x. That's okay. Your work might look different, but we should get the same answer. All I have to say is if you put the 6x, the negative 6x second, make sure you factor out that negative 3, okay? So make sure that you have a negative 3 there and not a positive 3, okay? So hopefully you did that. Again, if you had trouble with that, that's a good question to ask me in class. So that is factor by grouping.